girl Kat Corelli once again, and uh, this is episode 239 of my Cat Vibes series. And there you can see I'm starting a new painting, a small one. And Donald, sitting right here, is watching me very carefully. He's a wonderful cat. Uh, so, I started painting the second and the third uh, October poem at the same time, because I was kind of using the same palette, and uh, I thought it would be just more convenient to go ahead and uh, start with two little canvases. But a little further down the road, I'm switching to just one single canvas and sticking with that. So, um, one little concept that I wanted to talk about today is, it might sound kind of bizarre, but I think I'm, I think I want to share this because uh, it's kind of interesting, it's a little mind-bending, I think, uh, and I believe, I don't know about other painters, but I believe that uh, there's something to it. I find it helpful. So, um, there's this idea, of course, you know, the golden rules of oil painting is that you start from uh, thin to thick, right? And you start with large masses as you lay out, you know, an underpainting or a sketch or something like this. You start with large, pa uh, large masses and then you trickle down to the smaller details and you kind of emphasize the areas that are supposed to draw attention. I mean, these are the basic the basics of composition, right? And um, that's precisely what I'm doing here. But um, I think I'm taking this one step further in my thinking and in my perception. Because uh, this time what I'm doing, and that's kind of what I'm exploring throughout this mini series, you know, these October poems and these little canvases, like what I'm what am I doing here? You see, I'm very, very careless with even the big masses. They're very loose. It borders on abstraction at this point. It's very hard to tell unless you're looking at my reference photo, right? It's very hard to tell what am I getting at here altogether on this um, little canvas to the right, right? It's very hard to get an idea what are those masses? Are they even trees? What are those different colors that I'm laying in there? Oh, here, we're down to one, uh, one painting at this point. So the thing that I'm leaning into is How do I word this? It's almost like I'm deliberately allowing myself not to know what am I painting. It sounds weird. Let me unpack this. It's almost like I don't know um, everything. I'm not overthinking it. I'm kind of blocking out uh, that part of the thinking process. I'm allowing myself to just start with very loose, big masses, not completely understanding and not overthinking what is gonna become what. And that is, I'm doing this, so that I can eliminate all the unnecessary noise, visual noise. I mean, the nitty-gritty little details, you know, the uh, leaves that you will see showing up a little later in the painting, and they will show up right up front. Uh, in fact, a whole branch with uh, red, orange leaves. I'm deliberately ignoring that. And as I'm ignoring that, I'm focusing only on the very loose shapes. I'm deliberately allowing myself to screw up the proportions of things. I'm deliberately allowing myself to just think in very raw, uh, primitive masses. And allowing myself not to understand, well, quote-unquote, not to understand what is where. Because that allows me to, that, that provides me the freedom that I need. 
uh, that I need to uh, retain the looseness and the and the impressive the the expressiveness of the painting. That's what I'm getting at here. I don't want to constrain myself too early. I will have to get a little bit more, you know, more tight and more constrained later on because later on I'll be dealing with more precise shapes, with more uh, precise colors, uh, with, you know, things like twigs and limbs and, uh, you know, leaves and all of this. But in the beginning, see what I'm doing? It's almost like I don't even know. I'm not trying to define things. That's the word. I'm not trying to define things. I kind of know where the tree trunks will be supposed to be, will be supposed to, will, will appear. Um, but I'm just dismissing them. I'm kind of sketching out right now, I'm kind of sketching out the uh, those leaves that are supposed to be in the foreground. But I'm just, you know, kind of loosely, um, almost in a, in a sketch-like fashion. Uh, just laying out a pathway for them. Oh, there we go, there's the first trunk. See what I'm doing? You see how loose it is? And I'm painting at this point a little thicker and uh, wet into wet. It's still wet paint. Uh, I'm setting up the background and the entirety of the painting in a way which will allow me then to just tighten up certain areas of the painting without having to tighten up too much. That's the idea. So, uh, the concept here, like I said in the very beginning, the idea is, is that in the beginning, this is something I'm trying to lean into more and more nowadays. In the beginning, I am extremely loose. Not just loose in terms of color and mass and precision. I'm very loose on everything. And most importantly, in my thinking, I'm allowing myself not to know what is what, which allows me basically not to overthink it. That's the whole point. Don't overthink what you see. Simple shape and stop trying to worry about what is it going to become later. You see what I mean? So I think I will be leaning more into this idea when I will go back to painting some uh, still life. It's going to be an interesting concept because uh, it will allow me to free my mind and uh, not to get too hung up on um, thinking about too many things too early in the painting. And I, th I find landscapes, I find painting landscapes an excellent exercise um, not just for not just for the painting itself, you know, for what it is, but I mean for thinking. For allowing myself to think in a certain way. That's the best training that I can think of right now. I am trying to apply the same approach to figurative painting right now and portrait painting, portraiture. I started a portrait of Joe Rogan uh, the other night and um, I'm really trying to be very loose and I gotta say that in my case I think it works and I think it helps because it allows me to retain looseness in my painting. It allows me to retain this kind of poetic carelessness uh, but at the same time it also informs it, it also sets up the stage for uh, for a more coherent and more uh, efficient painting in the later stages. So see what I'm doing now. I am working with the negative space rather than working with the foreground. And theoretically, I could have done this in the very beginning, but I had to set it up first in a certain way. And um, I don't know if this approach works for everyone. I guess it might work for people who 
people like myself, you know, in that regard, who uh, tend to overthink things a little too much, who might uh, tend to get hung up on things a little too early, who tend, who's, you know, if your mind is racing and you are really trying, you're getting distracted with too many details too quick. I think that approach would work. I'm doing this consciously because there's a lot of factors in my life, a lot of things going on that are very distracting. It annoys me. I don't like it. Um, I'm trying to stay focused. Uh, in order to stay focused and retain that focus throughout the painting, which I find very relaxing, by the way, and very therapeutic at the same time, I think I've discovered this little trick for myself, and now I'm just really just letting my mind go and uh, it's almost like a childish thing you know uh, as if I'm allowing myself to in the early stages of the painting to become this little child once again who sees abstract shapes doesn't quite understand what is where and what is that thing over there you know it might be that shape it might be this shape oh look maybe that's an animal or maybe that's a tree limb or maybe that's a house. And then you look closer and you realize that there's no house and there's no animal and this is just, you know, a pattern in the leaves. That kind of thinking. I think it allows for more creative freedom. It allows, um, it allows not to get too hung up on, not to get overwhelmed with a multitude of, uh, details and uh, those things you see now I'm defining the the tree crowns a little bit but not too much just working mostly with color and uh, composition I think that this um, tree trunk that runs right through the uh, center of the painting and it has a curve to it I think it actually I think it's very expressive and that's why I picked it. I've actually tilted this tree even more, you know, as compared to the reference photo. Uh, and I like it that way. But again, you see I'm just avoiding, you know, kind of skipping uh, certain areas in the way of this trunk. And sometimes painting negative space between the tree trunks and some sometimes defining tree trunks and avoiding the negative space. Uh, another component, another key component of this process, I think, something, again, another thing that I'm leaning into nowadays is that I'm allowing things sometimes to just get screwy. Uh, so, like right now, right? Instead of caring too much about the accuracy or the precision of my brush strokes when it comes to this more distant uh, tree branches and twigs instead of that I'm just you know roughly throwing them in I know that I'm painting wet into wet so I know that the sky is kind of overcast and it's, there's a little bit of blue and lots of uh, lots of white there mm, I know that it's wet so I know that the paint from my brush as I'm painting a tree limb or a branch I know that it will kind of be swallowed and merged into the sky and that's okay that's what I'm looking for so that it allows for this uh, kind of more textured uh, line and as you can see I'm still using the same brush I still did not switch to a thinner brush and I'm doing this deliberately because it allows me again to retain looseness and to kind of be at arm's length away from mm, getting involved in too too much details. I remember Chris Fornatero. Uh, he has this channel on YouTube, uh, which I highly recommend, by the way. Chris Fornatero is wonderful. Uh, the Painter Couch, the Painter Coach, is the name of the channel. Chris Fornatero, look him up. If you're a painter and if you want actual lessons and this kind of stuff, he has a lot more, a lot more concise information on his channel, and I think he's very useful and uh, very straightforward. Uh, 
to check him out. So he... Mm, he was talking about this, you know, using it as exercise, like when you are painting a study, uh, using smaller format, uh, smaller canvas, and uh, using a wider brush, avoiding uh, thinner brushes, just sticking to a thick brush and trying to uh, maintain that uh, for as long as you possibly can. I think it's a wonderful exercise because it allows you, it forces you to kind of retain that thinking in terms of mass, shape, and less brush stroke, less, uh, less brush strokes, and more, a more kind of a thought out, a more strategic painting, let's put it this way, a more strategic painting. I know that I'm not going to go into the nitty-gritty of these leaves. I will leave them very loose. Albeit, they are in the foreground. I will not define them too much, and that's deliberate. And since these leaves are so loose, that means that the background is going to be even more loose. So again, I'm not going to define it too much. I'm being really very measured here with my approach. Again, some negative space. I'm using the same tones from the overcast sky. It was kind of a sunny but not very warm day that day when I took that photo. So now I'm switching to a thinner brush. We're somewhere in the final, uh, final stages of the painting. Again, deliberately, I'm being still not very precise. I'm not trying to be overly precise. I don't want that. I want the brush strokes to be fluent. I want them to be very expressive, and I want them to to be in a certain rhythm. Um, another little thing that helps me a great deal when you know painting in oil is thinking of it as of music. The big shapes and uh, the lines would be like, you know, the chords and the melody. Like the the things that are in focus, for example, like this tree trunk right here, would be like a melody. And the leaves in front would be like a melody. But then the texture of the painting and the brush strokes, the way they fall and where do they go and how small are they or how large are they, how textured are they, how loose or how tight. This is like an arrangement. It's like the rhythm of a song. So I'm thinking of this process in musical terms, basically. I think it's helpful. Again, um, if you paint or if you draw, especially if you paint in oil, and uh, I don't know, that's maybe something that you would like to think about. Um, all I'm saying is that is that this is something that I've discovered for myself, and it seems to work very well, I like it, and it makes the whole process very pleasant. It allows me to stay excited throughout the painting, and as I'm painting, it's almost like Instead of getting too uptight and too preoccupied with the nitty-gritty of the painting and getting all stressed out and bent out of shape, instead of that, it allows me to enjoy what I'm doing from beginning to finish. Because every time that I'm adding more of this almost abstract uh, layering, a little bit here, a little bit there, and doing it in a very loose fashion, it allows for my imagination to wander there. My eye goes there, and one time, you know, I look at it, I see one thing. Another time I look at it, I see another thing. But that's interesting. That's a very interesting conundrum. Constantly being in that spot where things might not exactly be what they seem to be. I think that's a very interesting spot to be in. And again, you know, it works for me, 
um, perhaps it wouldn't work for you know painters who are working in realism mostly who are leaning more into like realism and especially hyper realism because everything is pretty clear and straightforward there I think in my opinion but the kind of impressionism that I practice here I think I'm kind of in the realm of realism but at the same time heavily leaning into impressionism and the way I approach it I'm mostly in the impressionist mode and I'm deliberately holding myself at bay I'm deliberately keeping myself in, in that pleasant lagoon let's say metaphorically speaking of course I'm keeping myself in that pleasant lagoon where I don't quite know where is this going to end how is it going to pan out and I'm just kind of observing almost like I'm observing my unconscious mind wander a little further and a little further define a little bit but not define too much let it be just in that borderline state where you think it's that thing and it's kind of just enough to add one brush stroke to make it look um, more defined but not too defined not too tight because, you know, I, I think that therein lies the magic, you know. It allows for interpretation. And someone who's going to be looking at this painting, if they step back and they look at this painting, it seems like it's one thing. And then they come closer and uh, everything becomes a weird mess. And just, you know, blobs of, blobs of paint and uh, strokes and weird strokes and some, you know, crisscross things and all that kind of thing. But I always find it utterly magical. You know, there is real magic in this. When you take a step back and all of a sudden everything hits you in concert. Everything all of a sudden hits you like a one coherent chord or one coherent song. It sings, you know. But then when you get too close, when you get very close, you see what I've done with the leaves in the end? I didn't tighten them up at all. And the tree trunks are very loose. And they're broad strokes, broad brush strokes. And that's what I was going for. You see this little blob of paint here in the corner? That's what I was going for. And I like it this way. It's not too defined. It's very loose. And uh, I hope that, you know, uh, this painting is, uh, this video was helpful to some people, someone who is a painter like myself and perhaps shares the same kind of approach. With that being said, thank you very much for being on my channel, for sticking around. Thank you for listening to my new single. It comes from from somewhere. If you haven't heard it yet, please uh, listen to it and share it if you like it. I would appreciate that tremendously. Thank you very much and you will hear me on the next episode. Now. Read my mind.